Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I hope all of you are doing good. Um, it was a long weekend. So let's start. Uh, I hope I'm audible now. Okay. And let me just share my screen. Just one minute. I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, guys, can you see my screen? So if you remember, uh, we did a topic called NAT. Okay. So we finish uh, only as a basic uh, IP addressing, then we finish object grouping, policy, redundant interface, VLAN, NAT. We finish DSCP. Okay. Uh, also, we finish uh, different type of NAT, static NAT, dynamic NAT, and then we finish uh, port redirection. Okay. Let's go for a topic called security context. Now, this, uh, this is a little bit... Uh, difficult topic okay but anyway uh thing is like you know why it is called security context and what is the advantage of having this uh topic in your syllabus for asa uh initially when we um, talk about asa that is the hardware box okay no doubt we have virtual images also somebody was asking virtual image in the group for clustering that can be done on event but when we talk about uh, security context okay what exactly uh, you mean to say like what what is your requirement here so cisco said uh, many times what happened, like, you know, in your day-to-day -day activities, like every individual will have their own toothbrushes to brush the teeth. Nobody is going to use a single toothbrush for the whole family. So there are certain things which is independent. So same way, um, if I'm looking at my ASA, I'm having only one ASA managing the whole lot of network that is my whole land no doubt i can go for vlans i can you know, have multiple vlans i can have multiple sub interfaces configured on uh, my asa i can go for trunking everything is possible so same way when i talk about security context actually i mean to say that i can do you know virtual uh, my voice is not clear, guys. Really? Can't hear me? It's clear, it's clear. Okay, okay. Because Dani said... Uh... Anyway, so when it comes to firewall, let me show you one diagram. Okay. Um, where they said, we'll be giving you virtual firewalls. Okay, that means... Initially, if you see, I have a single box, but I can make this single physical box into multiple virtual boxes. Like uh, you must be aware of uh, virtual machines on ESXi server. You can have multiple VMs of one op uh, operating system. 
every independent individual machines can be done. So virtualization is uh, very popular. No doubt, uh, no, you can, uh, you need a good resource for that processor, RAM, everything, and you can allocate those uh, resources to individual machines and you can operate. So in our case also, we are trying to uh, change our box into multiple virtual firewall. Okay. Guys, keep yourself mute. Okay. Um, so that nobody get disturbed. So here also, you know, Cisco is telling or Cisco is asking you that, you know, you, if you want, you can use this feature of a firewall where you can uh, convert our firewall into multiple virtual firewalls. Okay. Again, definitely this is not a free uh, feature. If you are planning to go for virtualization, if you are planning to have multiple virtual firewalls, you can purchase a license for that. But the question arises, why we need this kind of virtual firewalls? Because they said that every company will have different departments and every department requirement in terms of policy, in terms of application, in terms of internet availability, everything differs. You know, those who are in web developer, they always need uh, to check their, their program or the design uploading on some of the sites. So they continuously in touch with the internet. But there are certain departments we have to give them less internet. But Earlier days, we used to do that segregation because internet was costly. So we used to you know, allocate bandwidth, we used to allocate uh, certain things. But now, though internet has become very popular and easily available and bandwidth is not an issue if we're taking a lease line. So not only just internet, you know, any application, any resources, any server that you make a department available, you want a different set of policies. And that is possible only when you have like, you know, every time you see our requirement is increasing day by day. If you're, you know, if you're talking about staying in uh, an apartment, okay, uh, or normal, we call it as a flat, flat. So that apartment should have multiple rooms for privacy. So you see in city or metro or metros, you see you know, people are selling two BHK flats, three BHK, four BHK, five BHKs with a very big living room, kitchen, modular kitchen. And every individual will have their own privacy. Every room will have their own color combination, lighting, decoration, interior, television, air condition, everything is a separate, you know. And you remember uh, in our city, we used to have a chawl system or we used to have a system where everybody is sleeping under, you know, in one area. <laughs> no privacy, nothing is that time. But now you see people are earning, the power is more, so people go for 2 BHK, 3 BHK, 4 BHK, or they are going for a bungalow where they, they have a self-contained uh, bungalow where they can have multiple rooms or multiple apartments inside that or multiple you know, bedrooms. So same way, uh, those are all physical. But here you can divide your firewall into multiple virtual firewalls because there is a requirement of a company that every independent department needs an independent or you can say individual firewall. And they can do anything they want. Like, you know, they can uh, put their own policy, they can have their own IP addressing, they can, uh, they can allow certain things, they can deny certain things, they can have their own object group, object networks, like that. But then Cisco says, if you are planning to, um, if you are planning to serve all the department, then you will 
go on buying uh, physical boxes say you are buying four boxes or five boxes or 10 boxes it is going to be very costly buying boxes secondly it is not just buying boxes you need rack space you need to do cabling you need to have a setup where all these uh, cabling has to be done properly so your administrative duties are also increasing rack space cabling power everything if you're going for multiple physical boxes so here comes uh, a relief from all those things you can just have two firewalls one will be acting as a primary second will be acting as a standby and you can do these two boxes or this one box into 10 boxes virtual boxes and the second man will also act as a failover for those 10 virtual boxes and manage it. So instead of buying 20 boxes, the 10 boxes will be like primary and another 10 boxes is going to go for failover. So instead of buying 20 boxes, which is not a proper way of doing the setup because nobody is going to spend such a lot of money on firewalls because other uh, other things are also there like we have routers which is we have next generation ips url filtering that is wsa is there esa is there fmc is there you, know, you need to buy a lot of stuff for wireless lan controller is there access points are there there's not just one device you're going to spend money there are multiple devices in the network uh, you have to spend money so in short, if I am trying to explain you what is security context means, it is nothing but a virtual firewall where you are converting your a box, single box into multiple virtual boxes. No doubt, you are going to have four interface, six interface or eight physical interfaces as per the model. You can allocate all those interfaces to that different department altogether and enjoy the same benefits what you are enjoying in physical. But only thing is, I told you, for doing a security context, you have to do certain things. You have to first, important is buy a um, license. So if I start this uh, firewall, suppose, okay. And if I go here, uh, the first thing that I need to check it, if I'm going for security context is <clears throat> I need to check whether my firewall is having those licenses or not. Okay. I'm just sh just showing you. No doubt I will explain you what is security context, how it works. Then only we'll move on for practical. So there is a chance that uh, these routers might have different number three two seven six nine. Okay. Or we'll just change the number of ASA. Three two seven seven six. So interface, show version. So in this uh, box, if you see, which is ASA 5520, there are certain things which are enabled and the license is also good. You get the license for 20 security contacts. But the only problem is they are all in Ethernet. I told you, new boxes uh, don't carry the license. Okay. 
so we were just i was just telling you about uh, license so yes you are having a license of 20 security contracts that means you can go up to 20 virtual files now when you buy a box and when you start configuring a box okay uh, this box is basically uh, by default in single security context mode okay this is one of the type of the mode like you know it will work in a single mode it is not going to work in a multiple mode so in security context there are two modes one is single mode and the second one is multiple mode single mode means like you know you you run only one firewall or you run one appliance with a single set of policy single ip addressing yes you can go for vlan you can go for dscp you can go for redundant all those topic which we did up till now in esa all all those things you can do it but when it comes to go for when it comes to you know the topic called security context or virtual firewall you need to configure your asa in multiple mode that is very important why i'll tell you because see in single mode it is going to work only in single as a single firewall it's not going to work as a multiple fire but in case of multiple mode it can you can convert your physical box into multiple virtual firewalls and every firewall will act as a different firewall. Okay, I'll tell you what exact changes happens when you convert your box into multiple mode and what is there in a single mode. When it comes to single mode, when you, when you give the command copy run start or when you say write mem, or when you say right, it saves the configuration in startup control. You all must be aware uh, during the course of CCNA that you have two modes or two, you know, startup config and running config. So running config means volatile. Startup means non-volatile where you can save your things permanently. So when it comes to saving, your configuration, that is the initial configuration, whatever you do on a firewall, this will get saved in a startup config. So only a single file is generated for the whole configuration in a single mode. But if I'm telling you that I'm going to use, like suppose if I'm telling you I'm going to I'm going to have a apartment where there are four bedrooms. You see, it is very you know, the, the term is very interesting and you know, people immediately will be like telling you, oh, good man, you are having an, a four bedroom apartment. Like, very good. But then what is the next thing you have to think of? Like you have purchased it, but now you will be needing four television set because you want independent things, then you need four television set. You need four beds. You need four wardrobes, you need four air condition, you need four tube lights, at least one tube light for each bedroom. Just giving example that what is, when you have four bedroom apartment, you will be needing, so you know, I have been long back when I used to stay near Sea uh, Face, I used to go and look at the bungalows there, near the Sea Face. So these bungalows were very costly and celebrities used to stay there. Still, uh, celebrities stay in bungalows. Okay, Some of the celebrities. So and I used to visit and I used to see them. Like, you know, how, how interesting or how beautiful is these bungalows. So I noticed that they are not, they are not properly maintained because of uh, the salinity in the area. Like just because it is facing sea and there is the air or the salinity is more in that area so it corrodes all your metal like you know or your grills all your gates in fact you won't believe every every year you have to change your electronic gadgets because they get bad 
because of direct uh, the air or the the you know, the the atmosphere there near near the beaches are very interesting. All the metal item get corrodes easily. So I used to see that you know paints getting bad, the grills are getting bad, the gates are rusted. So what is the good thing about this bungalow is that they are at a very beautiful location in front of a sea with nice air coming in and the view is also very beautiful. But at the same time, it costs you a lot compared to a normal apartment because you're going to change your paint every year. You have to change your television sets every year because you have to change your all your electronic gadgets every time because they might get bad immediately or, you know, more often compared to normal locations. So though it is having good features, they are also having some bad things about it. So same way, if I'm telling you that if I'm doing a, if I'm using a single box, if I save it, it goes directly into startup form as simple. But when I'm converting my firewall into multiple mode, and when I'm making my firewall into many virtual firewalls, then the saving criteria, saving, I have to save it, my every department or my every context file in a different uh, configuration file. It, it's not like when I say WR, it will go and save in startup config. I have to tell that, okay, if I'm making a virtual firewall for HR department, if I'm making a virtual firewall for IT department, if I'm making a firewall for admin department or any department, I can save those files in a particular configuration file, let's say hr.cfg, it.cfg, or admin.cfg, like that. So initially, what is the advantage of having this? Like I allocate interface, I save the configuration in different configuration files so that the taking of backup and managing the backup of these firewalls or these virtual firewall becomes easy. So yes, when, when I convert my firewall into multiple mode, there are a lot of things that change. Okay, like the configuration saving part changes. If you remember, I said, you know, if you're making a sub interface of a physical interface, you can't use physical interface. You have to leave it idle. If you're making a sub interface. Same way, if you are making virtual firewall, you can't use the physical firewall. You have to keep it. Or you can say you cannot use the system firewall. The term is system. Or the main firewall. You have to use all virtual then. Now you're keeping your physical firewall separate and you start configuring your virtual firewall. That is why when I change the mode. Now, now see. When I change the mode, when I say show mode, you can see it is in security context mode single. And you will see, when I see the config, I can see interface is there, I can see name if is there, security level is there, IP address is there. But now when I change the mode from this to multiple, wait, in fact, I show you the flash, okay? Nothing is there. So when I change the mode to multiple, what thing he will do? He will just keep the configuration of the single mode in a file called old running config file and keep it on the flash memory and the, it converts the system configuration also. and it creates an admin context. What is admin context? It is the context, it's a master context for all the other contexts that you are going to create. It is a master context. Everybody comes under master context. Now the question arises, who is your master context? Admin context. The name of that context is admin. And who is your, so he is a parent context. And the child context are like, you know, you create HR context, you create IT context, you create uh, uh, accounts context. You can also create Suppose somebody is asking me, I am having an admin department. So can I create an admin context also? Yes. But that is, see, master context is also name, having a name of admin. And the child context can also have a name of admin. 
but then master is master every context comes under master context that is admin context so all those thing all those changes take place actually. what changes first of all the saving of configuration changes like now every virtual firewall okay guys so now what i did i changed the mode from single mode to multiple how you know when you give the command show mode you can see it is in multiple mode so when i say show interface ip brief okay now what happens when i uh many times what happens there is some configuration already there okay some description so when i say show runs and i you can see there is an admin context already created okay so what i'll do i'll check uh keep it in my notepad then i click star dot cfg i don't want to delete uh one but anyway i don't want to delete any so when i say show flash i can see admin.cfg my old running config gone old running config means whatever configuration i'm having in my single mode will get saved as a part of safety in the old running config and get it saved in flash pen so now what I'll do, I'll just go and clear the configuration. Okay. Now you see, you don't see um, security level, you don't see IP addressing, you don't see all those commands. It's gone. So what I'll do, I'll just copy this. Which is by which is by default. Huh? You don't have to do anything. It is created, but in worst case, I delete it. Huh? So who who will be the part of admin context? So when I say show context, you see admin context is created as a master context, and who is going to be part of the admin and management interface? Because you you will be having a management interface if you really want to. Manage your ESA firewall remotely, you will manage it through admin context. Because see, your system firewall, this is my system firewall, will not accept any IP address. It's administratively down. And it won't accept any IP address. So what I'll do, I will make this interface go to the diagram here. Then I will one of the interface as five. This is my management interface. Huh? I'm going to use it as management interface. Which one? E5. And this is my inside interface. I will start all the devices. So as per my diagram, if you see, I have made uh, two contexts. One is HR context and one is IT context. My IT context. 
So one of my contacts is HR context, one of my contacts is IT context. That means in this example of mine, I'm using two departments. So what I'm doing, I'm making two virtual firewall. One I'm going to allocate it to HR department and another I'm going to allocate it to IT department. Okay, so I'm using two virtual firewalls. So 10 network, 20 network, two VLANs, VLAN 10, VLAN 20 is there, VLAN 30 and VLAN 40 is there. Uh, this is for HR context, HR context server, and this is IT context server. HR context, IT context. This is HR context server, this is IT context server. Okay. So in HR also, you have uh, let me just write. HR context server, IT context server, HR context LAN. And IT context LAN. HR context LAN, IT context LAN, HR context server, IT context server. Now, we only have one exit point that is for internet. So what we'll do, we'll, we don't create multiple VLANs on ASA. But here we created 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40. Here we are not creating any VLANs. So if you see, HR outside is also there. HR inside is also there and HR DMZ is there. HR inside is 10. HR DMZ is 30. HR out, uh, IT outside, uh, H, I, IT inside is 20 and IT DMZ is 40. So 10, 30 and 20, 40. But just because both of them are, both the department are going to same perimeter device that is router to exit. We have, uh, we, we are not going to make any VLAN, can do that. So here we will be seeing like two example. One is like you can, you're creating sub interface of, see, you have only one E0. One E1 and one E2 in this file. So you are using E0 for both a virtual ASA HR and virtual ASA IT to go out. Single physical interface given to both the contacts or both the virtual firewall. But in case of LAN, you are giving 1.10 for HR and 1.20. That means you are using E1 two sub interface that is 10 and 20 for LAN and for E2 also. So I can go up to 20 such contacts. So E0 will be same for all the 20 department or you can suppose you are having two um, ISPs. Then you can divide your contacts like 10 contacts will go to one ISP. Another 10 contacts will go to another 10 ISP. But here you have 
only one ISP that is facing R1. So E1.10 HR means you are you are giving E1 to two departments. One is HR department also, and you are giving E1 to IT department. You are giving E2 to again as a demilitarized zone or HR department. Same thing I told you, if you're creating 10 contacts or 20 contacts, you can give E1 for 10 people, but then you will create sub entities. E1.10, E1.11, E1.12, E1.13, E1.14, E1.15, like that. And same for demilitarized E2.30, E2.31, E2.33, like that. VLAN is up to you. You can use any number. So just because I'm using VLAN 10, I'm using my sub interface name also as dot 10, dot 20, dot 30. Okay. So as per the diagram, if you see, I'm having insight on both the department, like both the department carries inside and both the department carries outside. And both the department carries D military. So I'm having physical, I'm having one physical interface which is divided to multiple departments in a, in a sub interface form just like you did VLAN configuration so you know VLAN configuration created sub interface same way so in security context also you have to create like that so as per the diagram if you see I'm having now two contexts one is HR context and one is IT context and I have already decided the subnet like LAN will carry a subnet of 192.168.10 for HR and 192.168.20 for IT. Same way, I'll be having 10.1.30 network for demilitarized zone of HR and 10.1.40 network for demilitarized zone of IT. And same way, for outside, I don't have a choice. I have only one exit point. So I will be using 20 network for both and I'm going to use same physical interface that is also will work. Same physical interface will work for both. But now the question arises that if PC1 sends an ARP request to reach uh, because see both department are different and you are using same physical interface for both the departments. Okay, so when you send an R, E1 is same na, for both, like this is my firewall. So E1 is same, but there are two departments. One is HR and one is IT. So the MAC address of this E1 is only one MAC address. The physical interface will have only one MAC address. So, if you so in security context, we can do provision. If you are making multiple sub interface of this, like I am going to make E1.10 for this guy also, I am going to make E1.20. One more guy, I want to make it 15 or 16 or 17. So, what I'll do, I'll tell my ASA to generate virtual MAC addresses. I'm going to tell my ASA to have what? Virtual MAC addresses. Correct. Router on a stick. Similar to router on a stick. But in a a ASA, when they, whenever they are sending our request, they will get a different MAC address for E1.10, E1.20, they will get different MAC address. That means this firewall is going to generate multiple virtual MAC addresses. It already carries a database of multiple virtual. There won't be same MAC address given to HR and IT. So anytime if this fellow sends some information, it will properly reach to the sub interface. Any Anytime this is sent, it will go. Because my ASA will write down two different MAC address, no doubt, for HR and IT. And Definitely, this is a trunk link. So, first I have to do is what I have to configure 
before doing thing, I have to configure trunking and VLANs on this. Okay. So if you see my actual diagram, you see I am having a switch one. Okay. So what I'm going to configure here, when I say show VLAN, I have already configured VLAN 10 and 20. And I put this E0 by 1. Okay. And E0 by 2. Who is E0 by 1 and E0 by 2? This is my E0 by 1. And this is my E0 by 2. VLAN 10 is HR LAN, VLAN 20 is IT LAN. Okay. And if definitely this is going to act as a trunk. Which one? This E0 by 0 is going to act as a trunk. So when I say show in run, Interface E0 by 0. Switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one chip, switch port mode trunk. Okay. Why trunk? Because it is going to carry two VLAN information, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Same way, go to switch 2. So VLAN. VLAN 30 and VLAN 40 and this E0 by 2 and E0 by 3 is part of this VLAN. And if you see E0 by 0 is trunk. Trunking is necessary because there is a single physical interface connected to switch. E0 by 3. At present I have not uh, created uh, this thing. See, this is a management interface. Huh? So you can have a separate IP address for management interface. So what I'll do, I'll just make E0 by 3 will be the management interface. Huh? So I'll make one VLAN config T VLAN say 100. Name manage. So I'll put E0 by 3 switch port host, switch port access, VLAN 100. So when you see VLAN 100 is going to act as a management VLAN, and E0 by 3 is going to act as a member of VLAN. So when I configure ASA, Yeah, that only Sahil. My E0 by 3 is an interface which I am going to make it as a management interface and I am creating one VLAN called VLAN 100 which is going to act as a management VLAN for ASA. So I am going to put my E0 by 3 in the management VLAN. Okay. So that anybody who is trying to be you know, try to access ASA, he can go and access via management. Clear? Sahil, clear? So E0 by 3, when I say show run,
एक्सेस थ्री लाइन हंड्रेड क्लियर नाल गो टू ए से I need to clear it again. Then say allocate interface e zero by five. So run e five. Okay. So when I say show run. My main context is what admin context. My uh, interface that comes into admin context is Ethernet file. Okay, so what I can do, I can go to change to context admin, and when I say show run, I can see this interface. So I will go here on interface E5, say IP address. Some network hundred dot one dot one dot one two hundred dot two hundred dot two hundred dot zero no shut name if management security level hundred I allow him HTTP server created one user is called password. Cisco privilege team. So when I say show run and say show interface IP brief, it should come up, but it won't come up because I have to go in the system and first do what? Bring. All the physical interface up. So I'll go and bring all the physical interface up. When I say show interface IP brief, Post name No IP address is not gone. This is system mode. You can't write IP address here. The IP address is still there. Change to context admin. Admin context is the main context, I told you no. IP address is still there. So interface IP brief. You can easily access the firewall through this interface and this IP address 100.1.1. He's going to respond. To it. Okay. Change to system means the main file. I told you physical firewall cannot be configured. Now I create a context. Name is HR. Okay. And then I will say I want to allocate interface is zero but before that what i have to do 
I have to bring this interface to a particular VLAN. Then 10. 20 belongs to then 20. Then 2 dot 2 dot 30 belongs to VLAN 30 and 2 dot 40 belongs to VLAN 40. So when I say show run 10, 20, 30, 40. 1.10 belongs to VLAN 10, 1.20. If you want, I can put some description also so that things are clear. When I go here, I say, this belongs to HR LAN. This belongs to IT LAN. And when it comes to 30, this belongs to HR TMZ and when it belongs to 40, this belongs to IT DM. HR LAN, IT LAN, HR DMZ, IT DMZ. HR LAN, IT LAN, HR DMZ, IT DMZ. Yes. So now I already created a context with C HR and then I'm going to allocate interface E0 as the outside, E1.10 for inside, and E2.30 for DM. And I'm going to save this on this zero as HR dot csk so when i say show run context now i create context it then i do 20 40 and I want to save this config on it.c. Context HR. Context IT. Allocate interface E0 for outside, E1.10 for inside, E2.30 for DMZ. Again, second department, I also gave him E0 for outside. I gave him E1.20 for LAN. I gave him E2.40 for demilitarizer. And then I saved it. Here I can't give it any IP address. So where I have to give I will say, Okay. When I say show context, you can see all have come under admin context. And what I allocated them, I allocated them interface and I gave them. Now when I say show, when I say change to context, HR, and here. Now I say interface E0, IP address. 20.1.1.255.255.255.0. Say no shirt. Name if outside. Okay. Then I go and configure E1. Dot 10. I say boss, you belong to VLAN 10. Then I will go and configure say this belongs to server. Then 
security level is time. Outside is again 2111, which is facing R1. Inside is 10.1, inside. DMZ is 30.1. So when I say show route, get this, and then I put a route outside, saying if I want to go to, I go to 5. 5 is R1. No? In my case, now 5 is going to be R1. Can you see here? Not 2. So I can just go on R1 and say show IP anti breach. You can see 5 is there. And when I try to ping 2111, I can ping my HR context outside interface. So I did routing, I did basic IP addressing. Now I'll put some access list also. Say out dash in permit anybody to come on host ten dot one dot thirty dot two equal to twenty three w eighty and I want it to come for IC input. 10.1.30.2. And then I applied access group out dash in separate outside. Okay, so this is basically for uh, HR. We'll end up today here only. Uh, okay. Now, when I go here to system and say write mem all, the configuration is saved in HR.CFG. Can you see here? Now I have two different departments and two different virtual firewall. I can go in HR, I can go in IT. I can, if I want to do any policy for HR, I can go in HR. Like you have a living room and then you have a passage and then you have bedrooms. Like, you know, you first enter into living room, that is system. This is your system firewall. Then you can go in HR, then you can go in IT, you can go in any other bedrooms. Like, you know, if you have four bedrooms, can go in any bedroom from living room. So system firewall is the main firewall from there. You can enter into any other firewall. So today we did what we configured HR. So how to go there, change to context HR, and then you see my configuration is still there. Okay. I hope you understood this. Clear. So what we'll do, we'll keep this uh, saving. We save it so that tomorrow we get this configuration back for HR. If it is not there also, we can configure it again. It's not a big deal. But I hope you understood the scenario. I hope you understood what is why we have security context here. Yeah. I just stopped it. Anyway, I'll show you tomorrow, Sahil. I just created a normal access list where I allowed the traffic from out to in. Okay. Sahil. Just a normal policy where I try to allow the traffic to come from outside to in. Just to show you that my HR firewall is going to work differently, my IT firewall is going to work differently. There is, suppose I want ICMP, here I don't want ICMP in IT. I can separate it because both are now working separately. Both subnet is different, both routing can be different. 
one can run specific route, one can run. It is difficult with dynamic routing, so we can't do dynamic. Okay. Clear? So we'll meet tomorrow. Take care. Bye.